Captain, we're entering the coldest Arctic water. Now coming up to an ice pack. Excellent, Dashy. Steady as she goes. Aye, aye, Captain. At this speed, we'll reach the North Pole before nightfall. I can't wait to meet creatures that only live in the Arctic. Ah, the joys of polar life. I remember being a cub. Rolling in the snow, sliding on the ice, diving into the freezing water. I really miss it. Can't wait to get out there for an icy swim. <sighs> You're giving me the chills. I need some nice hot chocolate. It's only cold if you move slowly, Quasi. Keep swimming and you'll stay warm. It's as simple as that. In just a few minutes, we'll be out from under this ice pack. Then we can set the octopod down and... Uh-oh. What is it, Dashy? The octopod's getting so cold that my computer's frozen, Captain. I'm... I'm having trouble steering the ship. Cap, we better keep the octopod moving, or the engines will freeze and stop working. We can't let that happen, or we'll all be in... Big trouble. Dashy, activate manual steering now. Right away, Captain. Full speed ahead, Octonauts. It feels good to get my paws on the ship's steering wheel again. <sighs> We're right back on course again, Captain. Looks sharp. Aye, sharp enough to slice right through the octopod like butter. But the captain will steer us safely through. Yow! Giant iceberg, get ahead! Whoa! That was a close one, Quasi! <laughs> oh, the ocean deep is the life for me. Jumping off from board, sailing out to sea on the octopod, just you and me. And a million fish in the deep blue sea. Give me whiskers. Ice avalanche! Turn, turn, turn left! Turn right! There's nowhere to turn. We've got to stop the ship. Now. <gasps> Ten seconds till we hit the ice wall. Oh, ah! A fast, you mutinous, scurvy octopod! Stop! Six seconds till we hit the wall. Five. Hold on! <laughs> Three, two, oh. one. It's okay. We've stopped. I know, but you're standing on my foot. Oh, sorry. Phew, that was close, mateys. Now what, Captain? If we can't go forward, then we go back the way we came. Trapped. Dashy, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts, to the HQ. Captain, are we in trouble? Well, Peso, we're trapped here in the freezing cold waters of the Arctic Ocean. Surrounded on all sides by ice, with no clear way to escape. So that's a yes, then? Ah, you know, these ice walls are often quite thin. It might be possible to break through one of them. Aye, let me out there in the gut B, Captain. I'll smash that ice to smithereens. Or I could add a drill to the gut D and... Uh-oh. I was afraid this might happen. What might happen, Tweak? We've stopped moving, and it's so cold that ice is clogging the engines, shutting them down. Cutting off all 
all power to the Octopod. Ah, no good. The ice is too thick. If only I could find a place where the ice is thin. What's that noise? Captain, look over there. Something's breaking through the ice wall. <gasps> a blast! Tis the legendary deep sea unicorn! Ha! Ah, that's no unicorn. It's a narwhal. A narwhal? A narwhal. Fascinating. It's a very special type of whale with a spiral tusk growing from its head. They only live here in the Arctic. That tusk is actually a long tooth, very much like an elephant's. By the way, unicorns are make-believe. Narwhals, on the other hand, are quite real. I knew that. Hello, Boris. Barnacles? <laughs> what a surprise. It's good to see you, old friend. It's good to see you, too. I've known Boris ever since I was a cub. Yes, he was quite something, this bear. Always a leader, even as a young cub. But what are you doing inside all this ice? Our engines have frozen. We could really use your help getting out of here, old friend. But of course. My tusk is very, very good at telling if things are warm or cold. I can lead you out of the ice and into warmer, open water. Thank you, Boris. Now, we just have to work out how to get the ship moving again. Cap, the Octa engines are frozen solid. In that case, I'm gonna need to change gups. Tweak, prepare the gup C. Okay, everyone, here we go. Arr! One more time. There. Oh no! I don't believe it! Another solid wall of ice! Allow me, my friend! What's he doing? Using his tusk to feel how thick the walls are. Remarkable! As I thought, is always one place where the ice is thinnest. <coughs> You better swim aside, old friend. Thank you, Boris. You're very welcome, old friend. Temperatures are returning to normal, sir. And the engines are starting back up. Good work, Octonauts. So, now that we're free, who'd care to join me for a nice little icy water swim? Uh, gotta go clean up the launch bay. Uh, uh, no thanks. I've got to um, polish my spyglass. Uh, yes, uh, and I have to... Um, uh, Clean up the lab. Yes, that's it. Oh, suit yourselves. <laughs> this is the life. Oh, the ocean deep is the life for me. Shoving off from port, sailing out to sea on the octopod, just you and me. And a million fish in the deep blue sea. <laughs> Getting close to the Octo Repair Station, Captain. Straight ahead, mateys! Dashie, activate Doc. 
talking sequence. I'm on it, Captain. Still trying to activate docking sequence, Captain. Oh no! The octopod just isn't herself these days, eh, Captain? She needs a little holiday, that's all. Dashi, activate steering wheel. Easy now. Steady to the left. Steady to the right. And down. Docking sequence complete. Captain. Super, super. Wow, this place is huge. But it looks like there's every tool you'd ever need, Tweak. You betcha. I can't wait to get my paws on that Wonder Welder. Ready to get to work, Tweak? Cap, I'll have the Octopod fixed up faster than you can say bunch of munchy, crunchy carrots. Very good. And while the Octopod has been repaired, the rest of us get to relax, mateys. Octonauts, get ready for a holiday. Spyglass, extra eye patches, and me pirate's guide to island hideaways. Just one more book. Uh oh. Sunscreen, check. Camera, check. Surfboard, check. I'm ready to go, Captain. I'm glad you could join me on my trip home to the Arctic. I'm excited to meet your sister and her cubs. And we'll get to help the cubs learn some important Polar Scout skills on their first big Arctic journey. We'll hike across the snowy ground, swim through freezing water, jump onto ice floes until we reach the sea ice. Ooh, what happens there? That's where we polar bears hunt for food after the long winter. Ah, I remember my first journey across the sea ice. Is that little cub you? Yes, that's me. And that's my twin sister, Bianca. This photo was taken on the day we completed our journey and earned our first polar bear scout badges. And now I'll be able to give my niece and nephew their first polar scout badges. Let's go. Tweak, Tunip and Professor Inkling will stay aboard the Octopod. The rest of the crew will be far away from each other, but we can call for help if there's an emergency. Tweak? Press this little button to contact each other, no matter where you are. See you all in a couple of weeks. Bye, everyone. Have fun, mateys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to say goodbye. See you, Cap. Uh, listen. I may be on holiday, but I'm never off duty. So if you need me, just call. I'll be back here faster than you can say munching, bunching, scrunching. Oh, you know what I mean. Don't worry, Cap. We'll be fine. All right, then. I'll see you and the Octopod in a couple of weeks. Take good care of our ship, Tweak. You got it, Cap. <laughs> Time blizzard. It's so much easier to keep up a fast pace without overheating, isn't it, Peso? Peso? Right behind you, Captain. Uh, let me help you. Just a little bit further. We're here. But where is your sister's den? I can't see anything but snow. Barnacles! Bianca! Oh, good to see you. Oh, where are the cubs? They're right here. It's their first time out of the den, so they may be a little shy. Whoa, it's bright out here. I'm big. I wonder how big. <laughs> 
Better find out. Whee! Whee! <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Orson, Ursa, meet your Uncle Barnacles. Should we call you Uncle Barnacles or Captain Uncle Barnacles? Just Uncle Barnacles. <laughs> Mum says you're strong. I wonder how strong. Strong enough to carry you two on my back. <laughs> <laughs> and Mum says you're brave. How brave? Brave enough to be an octonaut. And I'd like you all to meet my fellow octonaut, Peso. Hello. We're brave too. And strong. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the way we used to play together when we were cubs. Really? Oh, yes. That's how polar bear cubs develop their polar bear strength. We wrestled all the time, didn't we? And I used to knock you over like a feather. <laughs> That's why I used to call him Feather Paws. You called the captain Featherpaws? Uh, uh, excuse me while I check in on things back on the octopod. Captain Barnacles to Tweak. Hiya, Cap. Now, aren't you supposed to be on vacation? Uh, yes, and I'm having a wonderful time. How's it going there? Couldn't be better. I'm welding new arms for the octopod, and the paint job is looking good. Sounds like you've got everything under control, Tweak. Sure do, Cap. Oh, um... Did I mention that the hot cocoa machine in the HQ is not working? Fix hot cocoa machine. Got it, Cap. Come on, Uncle Barnacle. Let's go. All right, Cubs. You're about to begin a journey that all polar bears have made for as long as any of us can remember. And we're the only bears in the world who make this journey. So, are you ready to go? Ready! and earn your first Polar Scout badges. <gasps> yes! Then let's get started by climbing that. <sighs> now take it slow. Pull with the front paws. Push with the back paws. Pull, push, pull, push. <laughs> Got it! And now, we slide down on our tummies, like this! <laughs> well done, cubs. Now it's time to use my favorite Polar Scout skill. Huh? Swimming! Follow me, cubs. Huh. Whee! <laughs> Use your paws like paddles in the water. Form a line, everyone, and stay close. Ah, there's nothing better than an icy swim. The rest of the crew don't know what they're missing. <laughs> flow soon and take a rest. <gasps> Over there! Hmm, there's a colony of walruses on that ice floe. Walruses are very territorial. They don't like to share their ice flow with anyone. We'll find another ice flow. Come on! <sighs> I'm not afraid of walruses. Are you? No. Come on! <gasps> Hey, this ice flow is walruses only. Who says? We do. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -huh. The cubs. It'll be tough to get to the cubs from the outside of the ice flow, but if we could pop up on the inside. I'll be right back, Captain. <laughs> Excuse me, walruses. Oh, where did that penguin come from? Yeah, penguins don't belong in the Arctic. What's a penguin? 
If you'll just move aside, the cubs and I will be on our way. Uh, not so fast, Penguin. Oh, uh, let him go. You're not the chief around here, I am. Hey, how come I never get to be the chief? Because you're not big. Let's and get out of here. Oh, yeah. On the count of three, we dive under and make a break for it. One, two, three. Hey? You see, you've let them get away now. No, you let them get away. I never. Yes, you did. We did Yay! it. Thank you, Peso. Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. No more swimming off on your own, Cubs. Would you like to ride on my back for a while? Yes, please. How about I take one and you take the other? There's an empty ice floe where we can rest. Oh, finally! I don't know, Barnacles. The ice looks a little thin. Ah, time to learn another polar scout skill. Cubs, when the ice is thin, stay on your tummy to keep the ice from breaking. <sighs> That's it. <sighs> That wasn't much of a rest. I hope we find some good, thick ice soon, Barnacles. I hate to admit it, but I'm getting really tired. Come on, Cubs. I'll carry both of you for a while. Give your mum a rest. Peso, you can swim faster underwater than we can. Will you swim ahead and look for ice? Right away, Captain. <laughs> Not yet. The solid sea ice is further away than usual this year. Yeah. Captain, I found a big ice flow up ahead. Wonderful. Yes. Good work, Peso. Lead the way. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, perfect. Now, that was a very long swim. How nice to take a rest. Uh, don't get too comfortable. This ice flow is melting. We're two paws lower in the water today. But there's only so much swimming a polar bear can do, eh? I swam here all the way from Canada. It's been tough to find good solid sea ice this year. Tough, huh? Try impossible. Nothing but water between here and Norway. And there's no ice any closer to Greenland. So we've come from all around the Arctic. Norway, Greenland, Canada, and Alaska. Hmm, and none of us have made it to the solid sea ice. Perhaps if we swim just a little further north. Oh, I have come from the north, from Russia. And there is no ice for miles and miles around. This is the only place where I can rest my weary paws. I've got you. Stay close, you two. Everyone needs to stay close together. Form a chain. Paw to paw. The wind is getting stronger. Are getting higher. We are in big trouble now. How big? Not so big that we can't handle it. Everyone, move in closer together. Mom, can we swim back home now? No, darling, it's too far. Oh, oh no, the ice is breaking up. Oh, oh. Uncle Barnacles, what are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Octonauts to the Arctic Ocean! Octonauts? Oh. We're stranded in stormy water on an ice floe. And the ice floe is breaking apart. No. 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 Captain, we'll be there as fast as we can, no matter what it takes. 
ready to go. Well, there wasn't time to finish fixing the steering system, but I think it'll hold long enough to get us to the Arctic. Dashy, activating launch. Come on, be a good octopod. Activating launch again. Come on. Yes. We've got to get to the captain faster than this. Can you boost our speed, Tweak? I'll give it a try. Let's see. If I unhook this and tie that into this. All right, Quasi, hit the red button and hold on to your eye patch. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. Uh -oh. <laughs> Got you. Oh, so goodness for your strong paws, Captain. Oh, dear. We are now four paws lower in the water. And sinking. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Looks like you could use a little backup, Captain. Oh, thanks for coming, Octonauts. Leave no bear behind. Octonauts, let's do this. Back to the octopod. We get to see the octopod? Yes! Barnacles to octopod. We're on our way back. How are things there? Captain, I've located some sea ice, but it's too far away for the polar bears to swim to safely. Then we'll just have to take them there in the octopod. You got it, Cap. All the polar bears are on board, down in launch, but having some hot cocoa. Oh, oh, very oh nice. that's good. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Tasty. And I'll get a cup ready for you, Cap. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Huh? The launch sequence just activated all by itself. Oh no! I must have got some wires crossed between the hot cocoa machine and the steering system. Shiver me, whiskers! The octopod hits the bottom. The crash will smash it to smithereens. Captain, what do we do? Captain? Don't worry. I've got this. That's usually my line. Twig, open. The octo hatch.
That's better. Whoa. Attention, everyone. There's something up here that you just can't miss. The Northern Lights. You know, today, you cubs proved your courage. We were pretty brave. How brave? Hmm. Brave enough to earn your first Polar Scout badges. Even though we didn't get to hunt on the sea ice? Yes, even though you didn't get to hunt on the sea ice. Mom! Hey, sir! Look! Well done, Dad! Congratulations! You know, it's a good thing that you showed up on our ice floor. We wouldn't have made it without you. Well, I didn't do it alone. And with the Octopod's help, now we'll be happy to take everyone to the sea ice. Oh, thank you, Captain. You know the sea ice is our true home. Oh, yes. yes that's for sure. What about you, Captain? Where's your true home? When I'm aboard the Octopod with all of you, the whole watery world is my home. <laughs> Captain Barnacles to Shellington and Dashy. How's it going up there? Um, a bit slowly, Captain. This Arctic ice is so thick, it's taking our sonic slicer forever to cut through it. Almost. Just a little more. There! We made it through. We're heading up now to gather the ice samples, Captain. Just try to be quick. The hole you made in the ice will freeze over very fast and you won't be able to get back into the, um... back into the water. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll be quick. Over and out. Who's making that music, Captain? I'm not sure, Quasi, but it certainly is making it hard to work. Let's investigate. Oh, me hearty. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you were so good at playing music. Thank you. This xylophone was a present from my Aunt Pepita. Well, you're certainly getting good, but, uh, Peso, do you think you could take a break so we can... This is Shellington calling the Octopod. Come in, Octopod. Barnacle's here. Everything okay up there? Captain, we found another hole. Another hole in the ice? Yes, but that's not all. I'm sending a video through to you now, Captain. They're beluga whales, Captain. Yes, I see. But uh, what are they doing? They appear to be trapped under the pack ice. They should be in open water. Can you ask them if they need help? I'll try, but belugas are very shy creatures. Wait, please! I'm Shellington, and this is Dashi. We are the Octonauts. We might be able to help you. Have to breathe. Have to breathe. What are you doing all the way out here, under the pack ice? The water froze over us. We have to stay near this hole. But why do you need the hole? Have to breathe. Have to breathe. But why can't you just swim back out to the open water, where there isn't any ice? Too far away. Can't swim that far without breathing. Have to stay near the hole. Shellington, what do you make of this? The belugas are trapped. There's ice all around them and only a small hole where they can come up to breathe. And this hole is starting to freeze over too. It's getting smaller and smaller. We have to rescue those belugas right away. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Yow! Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, our mission is to lead the belugas back to open water where there's no ice. But we need something that can cut a path through the ice so that they can breathe along the way. 
Yeah, what about the sonic slicers? They're too slow. We need to act fast before the beluga's Whoa. breathing hole freezes Whoa. over. I think I have just the thing, Cap. Okay, Tweak. Let's see if your icebreaker attachment works. The ice isn't breaking. Pack ice is really thick. It takes a lot to break it. water. Now, if I can just get those belugas to follow me. Belugas, this path will lead you to open waters. Have to stay near the hole where it's safe and quiet. Belugas, please follow me before the ice freezes over. Oh, no. oh dear, this is not good at all. Hmm. The belugas don't seem to want to leave their breathing hole. If only they would follow Captain Barnacles. <gasps> I've got it! Fish biscuits! Huh? What's your plan, Quasi? Well, I reckon these belugas must be getting pretty hungry by now. So I brought them a little fish biscuit snack. Good to see you tuning. Belugas, follow me! It's fish biscuit feast time! Yeah! Yes, it's working! Now shiver, whiskers. Those little fishies think this is food for them. Go away! Go on! Go! Keep it low! Belugas, follow me! It's dinner time! Too many scary noises have to stay by the hall where it's safe. Why aren't they following me? Belugas, like all whales, are scared of loud, strange noises. So, the sound of the gup sea cracking the ice and the sound of, well, quasi, probably scared them. How can we show them that this path to open water is safe? Professor Inkling, any ideas? I know exactly what sounds will make the belugas follow you. An old whale song recording. They'll hear their own sounds and follow right along. It's working! <laughs> oh, oh, it, it, uh, oh. oh, my. We're losing them again. We've got to do something, Captain. The path is already starting to freeze over. That noise they make, that sounded a little bit like... Peso's music. Peso, we need you and your xylophone out here right away. Captain, are you sure this is the best time for music? This is exactly the time for music. Your music. Captain, I'm ready to play. All right, Peso. It's showtime. It's working. So xylophone playing sounds just like the beluga song. Have to stay close to the hole where it's safe. But those sounds are so nice. Have to breathe. Have to breathe. It's okay. We can breathe along this path. 
If we follow the nice sounds down the path, we won't be stuck here anymore. Here we are, open water. Great work, Peso. Thank you, Octonauts. Sorry we didn't follow you at first. We belugas are always a bit shy around creatures we don't know, and all those loud noises scared us. Well, now we know each other. And we love your music. It sounds just like ours. Come on, everyone join in. Two, three, four. Ah, I don't know how to sing like a beluga. Oh, come on, Quasi. It's easy. Goodbye, Octonauts. Thanks again. Goodbye, Belugas. Safe journey now. Goodbye. <laughs> Relaxing than a moonlight drive. Flying fish. So you want a race, do ye? You're on. A vast me fishies. Wow! I've been hit. It's a snake attack. Ah, show yourself, you scurvy coconut. Uh, oh, blubbering blowfish! It's the mark of my grandfather, Calico Jack. Something's inside! Oh, buried treasure! Let's crack it open and see what's inside. Hmm, I think this calls for my newest invention, the Octoclaw. This little beauty will crush or crack almost anything, including coconuts. Yow! Now let's try it on Calico Jack's coconut. Still trying to open this coconut, eh? I don't get it. My Octoclaw should have done the job. I modeled it after the greatest coconut cracker in the animal world, the coconut crab. Maybe that's who we need to help, um, crack this mystery. Quasi, sound the Octo Alert. Ow! Octonauts to the HQ. Octonauts, we need to find a way to open up Calico Jack's coconut. We'll need the help of the greatest coconut cracker of all. Shellington? Ah, yes, the coconut crab, the largest land crab in the world. It has powerful pincer claws used for cracking open coconuts. Where can we find these crabs? You'll need to look on an island. Coconut crabs live strictly on land. This shows all the islands in the area, Captain. Hmm. Zoom in on that one, Dashy. It's crawling with coconut trees. Exactly. And where there are coconut trees, there are usually... Coconut crabs! Tweak, ready the Gup X. Alan, straight ahead, Cap. Coconut crabs only come out at night. We don't want to scare them off. Tweak, activate stealth mode. You got it, Cap. Hmm, not a crab to be seen. Maybe we need some bait to get them to come out. There. 
No, over there. <gasps> the coconut. It's gone. Tweak. Spotlight. Nothing. Let's take a closer look. Octonauts, let's search the area. I'll head right, Quasi. You head left and... I'll stay right here with the penguin. The name's Claude, but my friends call me the Claw. On account of the fact that I like to crack coconuts open with it. But I'm not a coconut. Ah, sorry. Don't worry, you're not very crackable. <laughs> Hello, darling. But there's my wife, Claudette. But her friends call her... The Claw! These here are my sons, Clive, Clem and Clarence. But you can call us... The Claws? Uh, yeah. How did you guess? Yeah, how'd you guess? I want to thank you all for finding this here coconut of ours. It rolled into the ocean days ago, and since we can't swim, we couldn't go after it. Now, if you don't mind, we'll be taking it on home where it belongs. Just drop anchor right there. That's my coconut. Now, hold on, son. This coconut's belonged to us for many years, so it stays with us. Yeah, yeah, it stays with us. But that very same coconut bears the mark of my grandfather, Calico Jack. <gasps> you and Calico Jack are family? Oh, well, uh, now that you mention it, you do kind of look like him. Thanks. So maybe you'd like to tell me how you ended up with my grandfather's coconut. It was many years ago that Calico Jack washed up on the shores of this here very island. He was shipwrecked and hungry. We nursed him back to health with coconut milk, and in return, he told us rip-roaring tales of the open sea. When we woke, he was gone. No note, no nothing. Just this coconut, which we've been trying to crack open ever since. It's downright embarrassing. I mean, cracking coconuts is what we do. Yeah, it's what we do. Well, we couldn't crack it, and you couldn't crack it. Perhaps if we work together, we can all crack it. Then let's get cracking. You two crack while we pull. One, two, three. <laughs> crack! Keep pulling! Tweak, deploy the rescue suction line. Aye, aye, Cap. My babies! Mummy! Coy! Tim! Clarence! Us coconut crabs are landlubbers. Those boys can't swim! Then we need to move fast. Tweak, Quasi, Claude, into the Gup X and bring some coconuts. Peso, activate Octo Ski. Tweak, activate Glider. Operation Coconut Drop begins now. It's Clyde! Ready, Coconut. Crack! And drop! <laughs> Bullseye! <laughs> gotcha! There's Clem! There's a lot of wind! This could get bumpy! Coconut ready! Crack! I don't see Clem. I've got to get a closer look. <laughs> there he is. Damn drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Nice catch, matey. And I might add, ouch. Quasi, grab in trouble up ahead. Thanks, fishies. <laughs> That's Clarence. Ah, oh my 
My boys are safe. Thank you, Octonauts. Good work, everyone. Mission complete. Ah, but we still haven't cracked Calico Jack's coconut. You're right. Hmm. If we drop it onto a rock from up here, it just might crack open. Okay, drop! Uh, ah! And crack! My babies! What was in the coconut? This is no coconut. It's a hollowed out cannonball from Calico Jack's ship. Whoa! So that's why it was so hard to crack. And here's a note from Calico Jack. He says, thanks for rescuing me, mateys. These here three coconuts are for the little tykes to practice their cracking skills. <laughs> Training coconuts! Let's get cracking! Look, there's something on the other side. So there is. Oh, and if you ever run into me grandson Quasi, tell him for me. Yeah. Captain, the kelp forest is right up ahead. Thanks, Dashy. Now let's hurry. Shellington has someone special he wants us to meet. Ah, oh, can't you just tell us who it is? No, it's a surprise. Ooh, is it someone you've known for a long time? Actually, I've never met him before. Is it some kind of slimy kelp monster? No. Hmm, is it a bunch of kelp heading straight for us? <laughs> yeah, the water's full of kelp. And it's all coming from the kelp forest. Something's not right. We'd better take a look. Kelp strands are connected to the seafloor by these special roots. If these roots come loose, the kelp will float away. If too much kelp floats away, there'll be no more kelp forest. And all these creatures will have nowhere to live. But what's causing all the kelp to come loose in the first place? A vast! Look, mateys! I was afraid of this. Red urchins. Red urchins destroy kelp roots. They can wipe out an entire kelp forest. Unless there are sea otters <laughs> around to eat them. Pearl! <laughs> Hello, Shellington. Everybody, this is my sister Pearl, the sea otter. Oh, hiya. Hi, Hello. Lady. Pearl is a scientist, just like me. She knows practically everything about kelp forests and kelp plants. Actually, kelp isn't a plant at all. It's a type of algae. See? So this is who you wanted us to meet. Uh, not exactly, but I'm sure Pearl can tell us what's wrong with the kelp forest. Ah, uh, yes. I'm afraid I've fallen a bit behind on my urchin duties. Urchin duties? Yes, we sea otters are what's known as a keystone species. The whole kelp forest depends on us to eat the red urchins so they don't destroy it. It's our duty as sea otters. But I've never seen you eat an urchin. Uh, well, actually, as it turns out, I'm allergic to urchins. Shellington helps the kelp forest in a different way, as an octonaut. Usually I can keep the urchins under control all by myself, but lately I've been kind of busy with... Well, let me show you. He's right over here. I wrapped him up in kelp so he wouldn't drift away. Everybody, this is Periwinkle. <laughs> this is who I wanted you all to meet. My new nephew. Aww. Aww. Look at him. Look how fuzzy he is. Perry's still just a baby, so I spend most of my time feeding him, cleaning him, and teaching him how to find food. Once Perry's a little older, he'll be able to dive down to eat red urchins too. As a matter of fact, it's just about time for Perry's first diving lesson. Oh, but I still have to catch up on my urchin duties. Pearl, why don't you and Shellington give Perry his diving lesson and let us clear the urchins out of the kelp forest? Oh, that would be wonderful. Octonauts, let's do this. We eat red urchins like this. 
Now you try. Oh, no, sweetie, that's a rock. <laughs> Barnacles to Shellington. How's the diving lesson going? Well, Perry's found three red rocks, two red shells, one grumpy red crab. <coughs> But no red urchins. How about you? It took a while, but we managed to clear the red urchins out of the kelp forest. Oh, well, that should keep them under control, at least until it gets dark. Captain, red urchins are most active at night. They might try to come back when the sun goes down. In that case, we'd better stay the night. We'll take turns looking out for urchins. Now, you're sure you'll be okay up there, Shellington? Of course, Captain. Nothing like sleeping out under the stars, sea otter style. Ah, we're holding hands and holding on to kelp so we don't uh, float away. Uh, uh. <sighs> Still no sign of any urchins. Uh, hello? Hey, can't the guy have dinner in peace? Oh, excuse me, I thought you were... Oh, urchins! Oh no, that's the strand of kelp Shellington's holding on to! Shellington, come in Shellington, your kelp strand is loose! Oh, um, I just want to sleep. Just a few minutes more, Mum. <laughs> Flappity flippers! Captain, come in, Captain! The urchins are coming! The urchins are coming! Lots of them! Uh, quasi! Yeah. What? Sound the Octo Alert! Octonauts to the Gup A! The urchins are heading for the kelp forest, and we've got to stop them. Everyone, let's... Uh, hang on, where's Shellington? Captain, the urchins, they destroyed the roots of the kelp he was holding on to. Captain, look! Shellington, Pearl and Perry are drifting out to sea. Dashy, Quasi, you take the Gup A to rescue Shellington. Tunip, Tweak, we'll help Peso with the urchins. There's no time to lose. Everyone. In two positions. Quasi, Dashy, any sign of Shellington and Pearl? We're approaching them now, Captain. Hurry, Dashy. We need all the help we can get. Uh, fast. There they are, matey. Too close. We'll crash into them. Quasi, maybe you can feel them in. Already on it. Almost. Yeah. Almost. like a job for a keystone species. Shellington! The urchins will keep coming back to the kelp forest unless we move them somewhere with plenty of food. <gasps> that rocky reef! There's plenty of algae for them to eat there. 
But what about the urchins that are already in the kelp forest? Pearl, I hope you're hungry. Reporting for urchin duty. All right, Octonauts, start moving urchins to the rocky reef. It's working! The urchins like it here. Keep it up, Octonauts. Thanks, Tweak. Good work, everyone. The red urchins are gone and the kelp forest is safe. Oh, thanks, Octonauts. I don't know what I would have done without all your help. Oops, missed one. <laughs> Penny, you did it! Your first red urchin! From now on, it looks like you'll have some help with your urchin duties. <laughs> Octonauts, my great-grandfather once visited the waters where the octopod sits tonight. Was he an ocean explorer too, Professor? Yes, indeed, Captain Barnacles. He wrote this book about the amazing things he saw in his travels. But there's a mystery in here that I've never solved. Yeah, I love a mystery. Then listen to this, Quasi. It was a beautiful starry night. The water was calm and smooth when all of a sudden... I saw something leap out of the water. Something remarkable. And that something was a... Hmm. Huh? A what? That's the mystery. The next page in the book is missing, you see. Oh, Professor, we're in the same part of the ocean where your great-grandfather saw something amazing leap out of the water. Maybe we can discover what it was. That would be wonderful, Captain. There's a map in the book that might help you find it. Yeah. Why don't you take it with you? Oh, are you sure? Uh, it's never left my library, but... We'll take good care of it, me hearty. We promise. Don't worry, Professor. I'll put it in my special waterproof satchel, just to be extra safe. All right, Sherrington. Octonaut to the launch bay. <laughs> Open the octo hatch, Tweak. You got it, Cap. Ah, I don't see a thing. I better check the map in the professor's book to make sure we're in the right place. OK, but be careful with it. Of course I'll be careful with it. And why don't I hold it for you while you look? I can hold it myself. <laughs> Quasi Shellington, look at this. <laughs> Flying fish. <gasps> Stand back. I've got it. Those flying fish took the professor's book. We're going after them. There it is, Captain. Hold tight. You almost have them, matey. They can't get away from us now. have a problem catching up to them. When flying fish want to make a getaway, they leap out of the water. <laughs> and look, they're gliding away. We'll never catch them now. Ow! Oof! Out! There's one that didn't get away. <gasps> Must get away! It's no use. I can't make it. 
Are you okay? No, I'm doomed. I'm a flying fish who can't fly. Oh, please don't eat me. Don't worry. We don't want to eat you. Ow! Oh, me tail fin. I smacked it on some rocks and now it really hurts. We know someone who can help you with your fin. Why don't you come back to the octopod with us? Uh, but Captain, what about the professor's book? Hi, we've got to find those flying fish again. Agreed, but first, our new friend needs help. We'll let them know back at the octopod. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Peso, we've brought back a flying fish who needs your help. Aye, Captain. I help any creature who is sick or hurt. Now, what seems to be the trouble? It's me tail fin. <sighs> you need a bandage. Good as new. Oh, it feels better already. You should stay here and rest a bit before you take off again. Okay. Thank you. Captain, the flying fish will be able to fly again in no time. Ooh, flying fish. That must be the remarkable thing that my great-grandfather saw. I'll add that to his book right away. You tell him. No, you tell him. <sighs> uh, well, Professor, we sort of lost the book. <gasps> You lost it? But... but how? A school of flying fish came leaping out of the water, and before you could say Davy Jones's locker, they took off with your book. Oh, dear. I see. It's gone. But we'll get it back for you. On my honour as an octonaut, we will. But how? Those flying fish got away from us before, but now we know how to catch up to them. We just have to leap out of the water and fly like they do. But, Captain... How in the seven seas are we going to do that? Tweak? I'm on it, Cap. I'll get a little advice from our new friend on how to make the guppy fly. The first thing you have to do is leap out of the water. That means you have to go up very, very fast. Well, I already know how to do that. Yeah! Wait, that's just the first step. What goes up? Um, oh. Must calm down. Ah, I almost had it. After you leap out of the water, how do you stay in the air? Oh, I spread me pectoral fins like this so I can glide. Hmm. And I use me tail fin to push myself out of the water. Fascinating. Hmm. <sighs> Pectoral fins and a tail fin that can move. Got it. Okay, I've added pectoral fins and a tail fin. Fully adjustable. Now, Cap, all we have to do is test her out and see if she'll fly. I'm afraid there's no time for a test, Tweak. Aye, we've got to get the professor's book back. There's not a second to lose. Peso. Is our flying fish friend good to go? Time for a checkup. <laughs> Try moving your tail, Finn. How does it feel? Oh, it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> He's ready to fly, Captain. With your help, we'll find your friends and get the professor's book back. Into the gups, Octonauts, let's do this. Yow! Open the octo hatch, Tweak. Aye, aye, Cap. There they are, mateys. And there's the professor's book. See if we can fly too, me hearty!
That's incredible. Look at them go. Amazing. Ooh, flying fish. I see it. Octonauts, thanks to you, we can now at the ending to my great-grandfather's adventure. We are ready. Oh, yes. Please. It was a beautiful starry night. The water was calm and smooth when all of a sudden I saw something leap out of the water. Something remarkable. And that something was... A magnificent school of flying fish. Right, settle in, everyone. The Vegimals have prepared hot chocolate. Cool of summer! Oh, and kelp cakes. Thanks, Junip. Thanks for the snacks, matey. Uh, but what are we here to see? Quite an amazing sight, actually. And that is? Dashi set up the remote cameras on the beach so we wouldn't miss a thing. Shiver me whiskers. What won't we be missing? Why, the baby sea turtles, of course. Oh, carry on, matey. Right now, the turtles are still in their eggs, in nests buried under the sand. I'll show you how they got their tulip. This is a video we took eight weeks ago. The mother sea turtles swim up onto the beach at night to lay their eggs. It's the only time they ever leave the water. And this is the same beach right now. The eggs have been under the sand all this time and should be ready to hatch at any moment. And we get to watch it happen. I can't wait. Ah, uh, nothing's happening, matey. Well, one can never be exactly sure when the eggs will hatch. It could be a few more minutes. Or a few more days. Days? <laughs> Have patience, everyone. I'm sure it'll be well worth the wait. What is it? Oh, oh, are the eggs hatching? No, it's the wave tracker. A really big wave is in the area. It's moving fast and it's heading for the beach. Flappity flippers, what about the eggs? <gasps> They'll be washed away. Chopper! Won't they be safe buried under the sand? Sea turtle eggs are very sensitive. If they get too wet, they'll never hatch. Then we'd better do something. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, we have to rescue those eggs before the wave hits the beach. Once we've gathered up the eggs, we'll need to move them to a new beach fast. Don't you worry about that, Shellington. We'll be ready. Come on, Tuna. Tuna! Everybody else, into the Gup X. Right, we need to remove the turtle eggs from their nests and place them in these special transport containers. Please be careful. The eggs are very delicate and extremely sensitive to hot or cold. Yeah, fussy little things, aren't they? They are, Quasi. If they get too hot or too cold, they won't hatch. We'll be very careful. The wave is moving in fast. We'd better hurry. Octonauts, load those eggs. <laughs> The last one, Captain. Good. The wave is almost here. Tweak, we're ready for the Gup H. Roger that, Cap. Here we come. More tow lines, Tunip. Rata rata. All right, Octonauts. Hook them up. Tweak, all lines are secure. Thanks, Cap. We'll get those eggs to safety faster and you can see bunch of munchy crunchy. Uh, hold on, Tweak. Oh, good catch, Gruber. This one nearly got away from us. Uh. Here comes the wave. Everyone, into the gut now. Brace yourselves. Just a little 
is he, Captain? Yow! And ready to go again! Captain, the turtle eggs aren't out of danger yet. We have to get them to a new beach right away. This one is too wet. I think we may have found one, Shellington. Sending you some pictures now. Ah, it seems to have everything the turtles need. The right sand, the right slope, and the right distance from the water. Perfect. Tweak, send us the location and we'll meet there to make new nests for the eggs. Octonauts, let's do this! Ah, I think that does it. The eggs are all safely under the sand. Good work, Octonauts. Ah, I suppose there's nothing left to do now but wait for the eggs to hatch. Yeah, more waiting. I don't think we'll be waiting long, Quasi. Look. They're hatching. Oh, that's wonderful. Maybe not. Sea turtle eggs usually hatch at night when there are fewer predators around to eat them. This beach must be colder than their old beach, which is making them think it's night time. Wow! <laughs> Amazing! Oh, just wow. wonderful! Look at them! Huh? <laughs> You're the little guy that almost got left behind! There you go! Hey! Put that back! I can do it myself! Oh, sorry, matey! Just trying to help! Thanks! But I don't need help! We sea turtles got to do this on our own! things are, but they sound hungry. Gotta go! He's right. Those seagulls would love to have a baby sea turtle for a snack. Then it's up to us to make sure the turtles make it to the water safely. Vegemals, are there any fish biscuits in the Gup eggs? I'm not afraid, We'll need all the fish biscuits you've got to keep these gulls distracted. Keep it up, everyone. We just have to keep these gulls busy until all the baby turtles are in the ocean. Huh? Oh, me, oh, my. One of the baby turtles is going off course. Captain, it's your octocompass. Huh? Baby turtles use light to find their way to the water. The light bouncing off your compass must be confusing him. Keep the gulls away from him! Ha-ha! <laughs> Leave that to me, Captain! Yow! Feeding time, gulls! Take the biscuit! Ha-wa! <laughs> Woo! Take that! I'm sorry, little turtle. I didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> there sure are a lot of not turtles on this beach. Oh, so it's you again. Don't worry, I've got you, little matey. Be careful, Quasi. His shell's not fully hardened yet. Then I'll call you... Soft shell. Good name, but could you please put me down? I want to get to the water all by myself. That's what we turtles do. There you go, soft shell. Just a little further. Thanks. Now no more helping me. I'm almost... Ah! Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Captain, that seagull's getting away with soft shell. Tweak, follow that bird. We're hot on his tail feathers, Kia. If I'd known this was going to happen, I'd have stayed in my egg. Tuna Otter! Tuna! What are you... Oh, I get it! Shell, you're a 
okay. Take me to the water's edge, please. Exactly where I left off. There! I did it! All by myself. Well, almost. Thanks, Octonauts! See you later, Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Congratulations. Good luck out there. Nice work today, Octonauts. Those baby sea turtles are off to a good start. So, what happens to them now, Shellington? Well, they'll swim far out to sea and get bigger and bigger until it's time for them to return to this very beach and lay eggs of their own. How long does that take? Um, about 15 to 20 years. Yeah! That's a long time to wait. <laughs> Sorry, Gruber. I don't think we have enough fish biscuits to last that long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a damselfish. That one's a blue-headed wrasse. That one over there is a surgeon fish. What's that one over there? That's, uh, uh, well, from here it sort of looks like an old boot. Old boot? Ah, oh, that's a weird name for a fish. No, I mean it actually is an old boot. It's just some rubbish. Shiver me whiskers! There's rubbish and litter everywhere! Dashy, any idea where it's coming from? It looks like debris from a storm, and it's moving along pretty fast. A torrent is pulling it all into this bay here. That's not good. A bay like that must be home to all kinds of creatures. They could get tangled up in the litter, or try to eat it and get sick. Then we need to get to that bay before the rubbish does. Dashy, activate manual steering. Already on it, Captain. and begin warning any creatures you see. Move fast, garden eels. There's a bunch of dangerous rubbish headed this way. You better take cover. Sounds like a real mess. Hey, thanks. Well, that was easy. everyone. Looks like all the creatures have either left the bay or found shelter. Just in time too. The debris is almost here. Then I guess we're ready to begin Operation Cleanup. Wait, do you hear that? Rockety rabbits! A pod of dolphins! Not just any dolphins, spinner dolphins! What? I said they're spinner dolphins! Look how they're leaping out of the water! Spinner dolphins love to jump and splash around. <laughs> and speed! We'd better get them out of the bay before the litter gets here. Attention dolphins! Can I have your attention please? Um, better turn up the volume. Ahem! Attention! I'm Captain Barnacles of the Octonauts and we need to warn you about... Ah, it's no use, Captain! These spinner dolphins are just too noisy. Alright, everyone. Let's take it down a notch. Ah, that's better. If I could just have your attention. Sorry, friend. It will have to wait. It's time for us to power down. Power down? Excuse me. Are you looking for the way out of the bay? It shouldn't take long if you just... No, don't leave! Hello? It's like they can't hear me. Fascinating. I've read about this, but I've never actually seen it. Do you know what's going on, Shellington? I think so, Captain. This is how spinner dolphins sleep. They swim together along the seafloor like they're on autopilot. They can sleep and swim at the same time. That's right. It's a bit like sleepwalking, but in this case, sleep swimming. Can they see? Sort of, but they can't really hear while they're in their sleep state. I guess we should wake them up then. Quasi, no. 
Spinner dolphins always go to sleep at certain times of the day. Waking them up early could frighten and confuse them. Well, we better do something. The debris is starting to wash into the bay. Looks like this cleanup just got a little more complicated. Octonauts, circle formation. Octonauts, we've got to clean up this mess and keep these sleeping dolphins safe at the same time. Tweak, clear a path through the rubbish for the dolphins. You got it, Cap. Quasi, Dashi, Shallington and Tunin, you gather up the rubbish and bring it to Pacer and me on the beach. Super, super! Aye, aye, Captain. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> to keep safe. Don't worry, mateys. I'll clear a path for these dolphins. And I'll stay with these guys. Oh, that's odd. When I go right, they go right. When I go left, they follow me to the left. Ah, ah. Follow me, guys. Quasi is here to lead the way. In their sleep states, the dolphins must think the gut bee is part of the pod. Keep it up, Quasi. <laughs> I can keep this up all day, Captain. As long as these dolphins stay asleep, I can keep them safe and... Uh-oh. Double uh-oh. What? What's going on? Huh? The bee! It's full of litter! We gotta get out of here! Uh, Cap, I think we might have a bit of a situation here. I don't like this! Attention dolphins! If you can just calm down for a moment... To keep this up much longer, someone's gonna get hurt! We have to get them out of here! That's what I've been trying to tell them! But you didn't say anything! Wait a minute! You made that exact same jump earlier. It must mean something. Not the jump, the splash! We spinner dolphins make different splashes that mean different things. It's like our own special language. That splash means follow me! So why aren't the other dolphins following you? Oh, they're making so much noise that they can't hear my splash! Hmm. Maybe we can help you make a louder splash. <laughs> Leave that to me, Captain. <laughs> now what's going into them? You just told them there's a hungry shark nearby. Do it like this. Ah, oh, let me try that again. <laughs> Quasi, take a look at this. It looks like she does a leap, spin, double twist, then splash. Try to copy her exactly. Leap, spin, double twist, splash. Got it. Find your way through the rubbish. Left, now right. <laughs> 
Watch out for that old net there. Just a little further. Looks like one more splash will do it. <laughs> Let's make it a big one, matey. Hey! Yeah. Nice work, Octonaut. We've cleaned up all the rubbish and all the dolphins are safe. Thanks for the help, Octonauts. And sorry our napping caused so many problems. Should we show them our new splash quasi? On three, matey. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, ho, very impressive. What does that one mean? You could visit us here on the Octopod, Orson and Ursa. Uncle Barnacles, can we show Peso our new Polar Scout badges? Of course, Cubs. Peso, my niece and nephew have been working hard. Take a look. That's our Starfinder badge. We learned how to find our way using the North Star. And we got this badge for learning how to make a shelter out of snow. But you're really going to like the next one, Peso. The seaweed bandage badge! <laughs> we learned how to make an emergency bandage out of seaweed. And we got to practice on a real live narwhal. Great work, Cubs. There are lots more badges that we don't have yet. And we're going to earn every single one, just like you, Uncle Barnacles. <clears throat> well, actually, I don't have every single Polar Scout badge. You don't? Really? Are you sure? There is one that slipped through my paws over and over again. I remember the first time I saw a walrus in trouble. Oh, my flipper hurts. I offered to help. Don't worry, I'll move. Move along, little polar bear. We walruses can handle this. Whoa! But I didn't give up. My tusky stock! I'd be happy to... Oh, get back! Walrus emergency! And that's how it went every time. Just trying to... Oh, oh. Oh. Huh? Oh. <laughs> and so I never managed to earn my walrus rescue badge. But now, it's time for you cubs to earn your next badge. This one is for swimming through an obstacle course of ice flows. Let's go! Good luck, cubs! Here's your challenge. Swim through this maze of ice flows in under five minutes. I bet I can do it in four minutes. Bet I can do it in three. <laughs> Here we go. On your marks, get set. Huh? I think somebody's calling for help. It sounds like it's coming from the other side of these ice floats. Come on, Cubs, follow me. This could be a real Polar Scout emergency. And these paws are ready for action. Do not be afraid. We are Polar Scouts. And we are here to answer your call for help. We don't want help. We want our mums. Well, perhaps we can help you find your mums. Help us find them. No, no, we want them to find us. That's why we're making all this noise. What are you, anyway? We're walruses, of course. You're too small to be real walruses. Walruses are big. With big, pointy tusks. These are walrus pups. Oh, so they're babies. But we're still 100% walrus. Understood. Where did your mums go? They went to find food. But they've been gone for a really very long time and now we're hungry. Very hungry. Really very hungry. Hmm. Let's see if we can spot your mums out there. Why don't you just go looking for them? We're too hungry to swim very far. And anyways, our mum said to wait right here and not move. So we're not moving. <laughs> An iceberg, and it's moving fast. Our mum said not to move from this ice flow. 
Well, they didn't say what to do if the ice floe moved. I know what to do. Cubs, would you tell me up to alert? Octonaut to the HQ. and I are on a runaway iceberg with three walrus pups. The pups are too weak from hunger to swim very far. And we got to sound the octo alert. We need to get these walrus pups to safety. Captain, we've located your iceberg. We'll be there as soon as... Uh-oh. Shiver me whiskers! You're on a crash course with two other icebergs. Oh, no. When the icebergs crash into each other, you can all get hurt. <sighs> Quasi, Peso, take the Gup S and catch up to us as fast as you can. And please bring something for the walrus pups to eat. They're really very hungry. Tunip, you and the Vegemals can help me prepare some bottles of walrus pup formula. <coughs> We're on our way, Captain. To the Gup S, mateys. <laughs> up to that iceberg and fast. Ready to mix up some walrus pup formula. Rattle, rattle. Yeah, Iceberg's getting really close. Too close. Move to this side, everyone. No, it's really very close. Hold on, everyone. This could get bumpy. Cubs. Watch out! out. Ah, got it. Oh, everyone, move back. Ah. <laughs> Barnacles to Quasi. Are you getting close? We're under the icebergs now, Captain. Yeah. It looks like you're trapped right in the middle. And running out of room. Use the ice drill to break through the ice. This scurvy ice is too thick. Turn on the heat, Quasi, so the drill melts the ice as it goes. Heating drill now. That speeds things up. Hold on, Captain! <laughs> Don't worry. Help is on the way. We're getting really... very squished. <laughs> My mum always holds me flipper when I'm scared, and I wish someone would hold me flipper now. <laughs> Here, take... My paw. Oh, thanks. That's better. Quasi! Need a lift, mateys! Just in time, Quasi. Come on, everyone. Into the Gup S. <laughs> Activate bottles. And now we need to find their mums. They may have returned to the ice flows by now, so let's start there. Excuse me. <laughs> I think I can help. I don't think so. No, nor me neither. Oh! Easy now. Ladies, I don't like the looks of this one. Oh, here we go again. 
Mom! 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 Oh, Waldo! There you are! Oh, little Otto! Oh, what a relief! Oh, God, oh, thank goodness! Oh, are you all right, love? We waited a really very long time, but we were carried off by a really very big iceberg. And then Captain Barnacles and his friends saved us! Huh? He does have that hero look about him, doesn't he? Ladies, how can we ever thank him for saving our pups? Hug! Wow! Oof. There it is! The Walrus Rescue Badge! Well, well done, done, Uncle, Uncle Barnacles! Barnacles. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas feast coming along? Ah, oh, I can hardly wait, mateys. Mmm, that Christmas kelp loaf smells delicious. Mmm. Christmas for starter, have a have Tunip says the Christmas feast should be ready in about an hour. First start, set up a table table. But first, they have to set the table. Oh, I love this part. <laughs> help you with that. You Vegemals are already busy enough. Aye, I don't know how we ever got by without these little mateys. Me neither. Shellington, tell us again how you met them. With pleasure, Peso. It was years ago that I discovered the Vegemals. Of course, I didn't know they were Vegemals at first. I was out doing some research when I found something very unusual on the side of the octopod. As far as I could tell, they were eggs, but they were bigger than any fish eggs I'd ever seen. In any case, it wasn't safe to leave them outside, so I brought them back to my lab to study. I kept a close watch on them day and night. Then, one morning, I awoke to a strange noise. It sounded like singing. And that's when I met Tunip. I'd never seen anything like them. They seemed to be half vegetable and half animal. So I called them Vegemals. Well, the octopod wouldn't be the same without them. Make any sense. 
sense. What is it, Dashi? Is there something strange on the map, Captain? It almost looks like there's a lake right here on the seafloor. A lake? At the bottom of the ocean? Oh, my! Now, this is a Christmas surprise. So you know what this thing is, Professor? I think I do, Captain. If I'm not mistaken, it's a brine lake. Brine lakes are made of really salty water that settles on the sea floor. They're very rare. In fact, I've never actually seen one. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go and take a look. I'm coming too. I'd love to take some photos. And just be back in time for the feast. Don't worry. We'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> It is the Brine Lake. Incredible. Cool. It's water that's underwater. That's right. Brine lakes are so salty that hardly anything can live in them. But there are lots of little creatures around the edges. Well, hello there. Merry Christmas. It's coming! It's coming! Yes, Christmas seems to come faster every year, doesn't it? Ah! Huh? <gasps> Jumping jellyfish! Ledgermouse, the move on! Oops! Vegemars the Merva. Hmm, Shellington Dashy and Inkling still haven't returned. Captain, come in, Captain. Shellington, what's happened? It's got us, Captain. Can't get out. A great big slimy. Shellington, come in, Shellington. Quasi, peso, tweak to the cup sea. Aye, aye, Captain. Sign of any of them. No sign of the guppy either. Captain, look at this. Shellington's magnifying glass. Something's not right. Um, Captain. Shellington would never leave this lying around. Then they must have cleared out of here in a hurry. Where do they go? Th th there! <gasps> Shiver me whiskers! Captain, get us out of here! Don't touch it, or you'll get stuck too! Don't worry. We'll get you out. Get to the cup sea. We'll use the tow line to pull them out. Oh! <gasps> We're surrounded. Brace yourselves. This could get sticky. <laughs> what is this stuff? It's called marine mucilage. Sea snot. It's made of rotting bits of plants and plankton. <laughs> Just how I wanted to spend Christmas stuck in a big Lob of snot. Captain, those creatures are about to be stuck in here with us. Wait. Oh. That's not good. Sea snot can be very dangerous to any sea creatures who get stuck in it. We've got to help them. But first, we've got to get ourselves out. We'd better call for backup. Backup? Well, who's going to get us out of this one, Captain? Tune in. Come in, tune in. Couple, the first of the cooler. The Christmas feast will have to wait, Tunic. We're stuck in a snot block. <gasps> and if we don't get out of here soon, there'll be no one there to eat it. Need your help, Tunic. Sending an emergency rescue plan. Hurry! Super? Emergency rescue plan downloaded. 
rescue vehicle so you don't get stuck yourself. Extend a rescue line to the person or creature and use it to pull them out of the blob. Mm. Always remember, a vehicle and rescue line beats a blob every time. Now, let's try out our technique. I think I see a blob now. Help! 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 <laughs> Captain Barnacles, we are stuck and we can't get out. Stay in your vehicle, matey, or you'll get stuck in the pudding too. It's a blob. I mean the blob. <gasps> Here, grab onto this rescue line. <laughs> Not bad. And that's all there is to it. So remember, a vehicle and rescue line beats a blob every, every time. time. A vehicle, a rescue line, a pizza blabber, a big tanner! Vegemars,
vehicle, but I do have a rescue line. Rescue line beats a blob every time. Good work, Vegemals. Super Couple, this is quite a creation, Vegemals. You think you can pull the guppy out of the snot blob too? It looks like you could use some help. Come on, everyone. Look! The blob's getting bigger! <laughs> Vegemals, it's time to deal with this snot blob once and for all! A vacuum! Ah, good thinking, little mateys! Just too much of it. Tune it. Pull up. Yeah. Now where can we pull all this snot? Oh, right in there. The brine lake. It's too salty even for sea snot. And there aren't any creatures for it to hurt in there. Sounds like the perfect place for this stuff. Head for the brine lake, Tunip. A 
Vegemal and a sleigh ride saves Christmas every time. Right, Tunip? Tunip! Tunip! I think he's waking up. Cheaper? Easy there, Tunip. You've had a lot of excitement today. Good work, Tunip. We're all very proud of you. You and the other Vegemals saved us from that snot blob. And you saved all those sea creatures by the brine lake. And best of all, Beatty, you saved Christmas. Like dinner is served. Yeah. Oh, oh, Vegemals, thank you for preparing such a wonderful feast. <laughs> but most of all, thank you for getting us all back home for Christmas. Hooray! Hooray! Turn up. Everyone join in. Right, let's go. 